Hey, what up? It's Brad. I'm kicking it here in the Tampa International Airport, and I wanted to shoot a video about a topic that I spent a lot of time thinking about and that I talk to my friends about a lot, especially people who are really interested in self-development. And that topic is how your brain, all of our brains, the human brain in general, is not made to make you succeed in the world of 2018. In fact, all it's made to do is keep you alive, look for problems, and honestly, psych you out like crazy. So the base understanding that's required to kind of underlie this whole video is that the human brain basically stopped evolving basically when humans became cavemen and started organizing in small groups. That's when more of social evolution took over and behaviors came became more important and social interactions became more important and actual evolution stopped. So the actual way your brain is designed stopped changing and essentially in the way people acted in society was then how they either you know either they reproduced or they didn't because basically the cavemen who were well liked and provided well for the tribe they would mate with the females and the guys who didn't have anything to offer sorry buddy going off of that assumption that the human brain basically has not evolved since we were cavemen going with that understanding there are you know some things that take on a new light some some attributes of life that you may be experiencing and i know that i've experienced that take on a totally new light when you understand that your brain is not made to make you thrive in 2018 for example negative thought loops negative thought loops don't occur because you're a bad person or because you're fucked up in the head. Negative thought loops occur because your brain is always looking for problems and even if it doesn't find, basically whenever your brain gets asked a question, it finds an answer, even if there's not a real answer. So your brain is always asking what's wrong in the situation. Where is the potential threat? Like do I need to be on guard? Even when it doesn't need to be on guard. So if it's asking that question, and there's not a direct answer you know there's no there's no physical threats obviously for you know for most people obviously there's some notable exceptions but since there's no physical threat then it looks to more existential threats and you get caught up in those thought loops thinking about what those potential threats are because your brain loves focusing on that because it it's just doing its thing it just wants to keep you alive it's not its fault it's just the way we're programmed so that's kind of where negative thought loops originate and then you know once you're ingrained in a certain way of thinking your brain likes to stay in that pattern especially once people get older it's you know the saying old dogs don't learn new tricks well it's, it's i mean it's true everybody kind of knows that it's true and it's especially for humans it's because once we get stuck in a certain way of thinking so to speak it's very very exceedingly difficult to change that without some sort of huge life trauma you know the kind the type of thing you know divorce end of a huge relationship death of a family member something you would not wish on someone um often becomes the thing that snaps a person out of say negativity or negative thought loops and puts them onto a path of self-discovery and then mastery of their brain um so that is not a reproducible or uh <laughs> advisable course of action to get this shit handled and and frankly this is an extremely if you're a person who wants to succeed in business if you're a person who wants to relate to your friends or the opposite sex especially especially for a man trying to relate to women this is a huge area to master it's massively important massively important so Aside from, you know, nuking a, <laughs> a relationship or in your life or waiting for a, a death of someone close to you to happen, let's talk about some other strategies that I've found. I've done a lot of self-development reading and study, uh, and I want to talk to you about these four strategies for taming your brain. The first one is, it, it, it sounds deceivingly simple, and unless you're really understanding the nuance of it, it's not gonna really make sense, but it is to acknowledge your thoughts. And the only way that you can acknowledge your thoughts is by understanding that you are not the thinker. 
Now, to anyone who's ever done any study on uh, Zen or Buddhist philosophy, they'll kind of understand what I'm saying there. But if you haven't, take take a second and just just sit quietly and and watch your brain and watch for what watch for what your next thought is like you're watching a mouse hole did it take a second for something to come up i know in most instances it you know you're probably thinking what the fuck is this guy talking about like why is he telling me to sit there quietly this is supposed to be a video about my brain but that voice in your head is not you i would highly recommend downloading uh, what's the name of that app? Headspace. That's a fantastic gateway into meditation. And when I say meditation, I don't mean, you know, shaving your head clearly, putting a robe on and sitting in the mountains for 10 days, never speaking to anyone. What I mean is simply being aware of what's going on inside your own head. Most people kind of, they kind of peripherally know, but they never take their focus fully onto what's going on inside their own head. And that's a a massively uh, the saying you can't change something unless you can measure it applies to thoughts as well uh you really you can't even begin to direct your own thoughts or thought processes until you've acknowledged what they are now and then you can start molding them into what you want them to be the second method that i would highly recommend is what i call faking it until you make it so once you kind of have acknowledged what your own thought patterns are and what tendencies you have, what negative thought loops you tend to fall into, you're going to get a good idea then of where you want to go. You you know where you are and now you know where you want to go and you, and you start finding people you resonate with or um, you know thought leaders. You, Tony Robbins and Gary Vaynerchuk are, are two great examples of people who a lot of people resonate with their ideas but they don't really understand how that they're like, oh, I wish I could have that motivation or I wish I could have that positivity, blah, blah, blah. Well, you can, but what it requires is it requires having some internal friction in order to break up the, you know, the stagnant mental processes that are in your own head currently and to install new ones. You, you literally have to scramble your brain in order to install new thought processes and the way you do it is by faking it until you make it so what do i mean by that what i mean is you speak with with real passion like real conviction about the thought processes and ideas that you want to install inside your brain to people around you to to random strangers on the street to anyone you possibly can even to just to a camera it can work because and by the way, the better, the, the more um, emotion and phys- like physiological action you can take while speaking about your beliefs, you know, if you can really get your body into it, that will help speed up the process of reprogramming your brain. And the reason is that really embed. So your, you know, your brain obviously is involved with the rest of your nervous system all the way up and down your body. So if you are trying to install a belief or thought and, and really make it real for yourself, if you, the more of your body that you can involve, the better. So that, that is a huge one. And all this really requires in order to execute is a one an intellectual understanding of the thought process that you want to install and two a willingness to just talk about it and and that's really it once you know what you want to think start just speaking about it to people around you and at first it's going to feel the reason i call it fake it till you make it is it's going to feel weird and incongruent and like you're not being your genuine self and honestly that's okay like part of the process of it the only reason you would ever want to do this is if you're not totally satisfied with your genuine self and by the way your genuine self is a conglomeration of the social pressures around you uh marketing that you get on instagram facebook television like I mean, the like consumer culture, like that is not you that what you think of as you is not you. Like most people have zero direction about what, who they want to be. They're just getting pulled around by these outside influences. And, and then the, they, 
rational. I mean, I, I understand. I I get pissed about it because once I think about it, but they they rationalize what that that is them, you know, because it's comfortable and it's an excuse not to take action, which I get. I mean, we're we're lazy creatures. You know, it is what it is. But the bottom line is the you that's created by consumer culture and outside influences. It's not you, man. It's not you. So once you figure out what you want you to be, start moving yourself towards there. And that's fake it till you make it. The third method that I would highly recommend is installing a daily ritual of some sort. And it could be, it really could be in the morning or at night, but for this, for what I'm kind of, the way I'm kind of going to describe it, um, and the way it's worked best for me is probably more tailored towards a morning ritual. So what I would recommend is something, um, a, on YouTube, there are a bunch of examples of Tony Robbins priming videos, and those that is a great example of what I'm talking about here. And what I'm what I would recommend is a ritual in which you take say 10 or 15 minutes to yourself. You focus on your breathing for say one to two minutes, and then you focus on say three things that you're grateful for. You know, just generally getting yourself into a more positive and uh, open-minded and feeling really feeling safe because when you're feeling grateful you feel good you feel safe you know it, you're not focused on what the problems are you're focused on good things you know and once you're there in that headspace and you really feel and you got to really again involve your body because the more the the brain i forget exactly how tony robbins always puts it but he always says that the the brain is your largest organ is that what he says i know that's not true he says something like that your brain is your most powerful organ or whatever but it really is involved with the rest of your body so the more you can involve your body in this the better so you get to a place of gratitude right the next thing that you're going to want to do is just take time to proactively focus on three things that you want to accomplish during that day and then say one or two big picture goals that you have and when you're when you're imagining the things that you want to do or your goals you want to really step into them and make them tangible and real and when i say step into them it, it's it's really a mental exercise of imagining what it would feel like to accomplish even that little task that you want to accomplish during the day and getting that um it basically you can have the feeling it's like uh it's like the person that buys a treadmill and feels more fit after they buy the treadmill you can feel more proactive just by feeling like you've done something and then you know that actually can lead to more proactivity and it, which is crazy the way it sounds. And literally as I was saying, I was like, wait, is that right? But I've done this and I know for a fact that it works. So it, it sounds crazy and it sounds like it's too good to be true. But I mean, test it. Find out for yourself. The fourth and final method that I would recommend is basically bombarding yourself kamikaze style with as much content involving the type of thinking that you want to install as you can possibly stand i'm talking like when you're this is why it's so great that podcasting is becoming such a huge thing and so many people are putting out their thoughts on in podcast format because you can listen to them while you're doing other things so <clears throat> i probably did this for about a year after i got divorced which is kind of my this you know if you're wondering what my backstory is and how i got into this stuff it's getting divorced was the thing in my life that really set, kind of cracked the the shell of conditioned thinking and then I was more open to these kind of ideas because I was like oh I don't know who I am blah 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 so if you can take the you know <laughs> take the time but in a lot of cases it doesn't even require any extra time to do this but just bombard yourself with content from people whom you want to be like so I talk about this in another video that I made, um, and it was like something like how to get a mentor the easy way in 2017. And basically, the the idea that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, that idea came about in a time when the only way to interact with someone was face to face. But now what do we have? What's the other way we can interact with people now? We can interact with them digitally. So now that you can interact with someone you know, on YouTube, you can get, say like, you, you can just sit down with Gary Vee and as Roland would say, put the bullshit aside. That's a Roland trap. Maybe I'll play it in here. 
peeping phantoms taking meetings at hotels out of budget private face-to-face -face encounters that the cameras make public sitting down with gary v putting the bullshit aside he said you found your lane so grind it's just a matter of time you can sit down with somebody like that and hear their intimate thoughts in long form on youtube or in a podcast or in an audiobook even and if you can just bombard yourself with repetition repetition it's going to be the same thing over and over and over and over again but if you can bombard yourself with the type the content from the type of people that you want to think or act like i promise you i promise you i promise you it will have an effect there is no way you, you just you can't spend that much time listening to that type of content without something shifting inside your brain and it's not necessarily going to be a life-changing shift but you know where there's fire there's smoke you got to get the ball rolling you got to do you know you got to do something if you're going to change the hardest thing to change is a habit and a mental habit is well i mean i guess everything's kind of a mental habit but thought processes are something that we don't we don't pay a lot of attention to because they're not so obvious i guess like it's easier to find reasons to stop smoking or to stop a cocaine addiction to, to choose an extreme example because there are very tangible obvious uh consequences in your life but the consequences of negative thought patterns and negative thought loops and letting your brain really run you are not as obvious i hope you loved and I mean love those four techniques. And if you did, it would mean the world to me if you would take out your phone right now and follow me on Instagram. It's at Brad underscore Basham. That's my last name. It's really hard to spell. I'll put the spelling in here. I'm posting stuff like this almost on a daily basis. And I've really gotten a lot of great feedback from my personal, you know, my friends and acquaintances who uh, follow me on there and they've really said that seeing that stuff is a really good daily reminder to put some of these practices into effect so again it would really mean the world to me if you follow me on Instagram and I hope you enjoyed the video I'm planning on putting out a lot more of this type of content so definitely stay tuned here on YouTube as well peace a born hustler, mom and gray me with the words She always told me I was perfect, son, go get what you deserve There's winners and there's losers, stay a pawn to form a gang By your tongue for not a soul and fuck opinions till it stings out oh. See, ain't nobody gonna hand you no help And ain't no cosigns and label, mom, I did it myself 